Hello, anatomy students. In this podcast, I'm going to review the major types of cell junctions. As we've learned, tissues are groups of specialized cells, and they are connected to each other through various methods of attachment called cell junctions. Junctions are often formed between the plasma membranes of adjacent tissue cells. There are many different types of cell junctions, but the five most common ones in the human body are shown here in the diagram. These are the tight junctions, the adherence junctions, the desmosomes, the hemidesmosomes, and the gap junctions. The tight junctions are composed of strands of transmembrane proteins that resemble a net or a spider web. These proteins act as rivets that strongly bind together the cell membranes of adjacent cells. Tight junctions are common in the epithelial tissue of the digestive tract as well as in the urinary bladder where they create a tight seal between the cell membranes of adjacent cells preventing substances from passing in between the cells. This forces chemicals into and through cells moving chemicals across the cell membrane rather than bypassing around the cells. Tight junctions also prevent the leakage of chemical substances out of organs into the blood or tissue fluid. An example of this is keeping digestive enzymes inside the intestine. Adherence junctions are composed of condensed protein bands called plaques. These attach the adjacent cell membranes two membrane proteins and the cytoskeleton within the cell. The root word of adherens is adhere, which means to stick together. Adherens junctions also contain microfilaments, which extend along the length of the plaque. Also within the plaque are a type of transmembrane glycoprotein called cadherins, and these connect the cells to each other. These junctions act like strong seam welds in metalwork. They resemble belts that encircle the entire cell and form in epithelial tissues what are called adhesion belts, because of this. Adherence junctions help prevent epithelial tissues from being pulled apart during muscular contraction, such as when food is moved through the intestines. Desmosomes are another type of cell junction that are similar in overall structure to the adherence junctions. They also have plaque and cadherin proteins that attach neighboring cells to each other. But instead of microfilaments, the plaques of desmosomes attach to another type of cytoskeleton protein called the intermediate filaments, which are made up of the tough protein keratin. These are strong cable-like proteins that are able to pass through the plaque. The intermediate filaments help pull the membranes of neighboring cells together. They also do not surround the entire cell like the adherence junctions do. Instead, they function like spot welds, attaching the cell membranes together at distinct points. 
the desmosomes act as strong structural reinforcements of the cell membrane at specific points of stress and tension, helping to maintain overall tissue stability. They are common in the outer epidermis of the skin, helping to resist the physical forces that the skin is constantly exposed to. Next up are the hemidesmosomes. And these have a similar structure to the desmosomes, but as the name suggests, they're basically half of a desmosome. The prefix hemi means half. They are found on the lower or basal surface of cells where they anchor cells to the underlying basement membrane, not to other cells like the other cell junctions do. They also contain a different type of transmembrane protein. Instead of the cadherins found in the desmosomes, the hemidesmosomes contain integrin proteins, and these attach to the intermediate filaments. And the last cell junction I'm going to discuss are the gap junctions. Gap junctions are connections between adjacent cells that allow chemicals, such as small molecules like glucose and ions, to move from one cell to another via diffusion. Larger molecules, like proteins, are too big to move through the gap junctions they simply can't fit. They consist of tube-like protein complexes called connexins that connect together the cell membranes of the neighboring cells. But they are unique in that they form a connecting tunnel or channel forming the gap in between the adjacent cells. The tunnel is known as a connexon. Gap junctions allow cells in a tissue to communicate with each other through chemicals and electrical signals. Gap junctions are common in the membranes of nerve cells as well as muscle fibers. which allow the nerve and muscle impulses to be quickly conveyed from cell to cell, permitting normal function of the nervous system as well as muscle contraction. 